Hey, it's Lucky. Uh, the creator of Godot just tweeted out some advice from people moving from Unity to Godot. And I wanted to run through this thread real quick and explain to you what everything means. So, the first piece of advice he gives is uh, you have to imagine Godot's scene tree as a tree of components without entities. This has two quirks. It's much clearer to understand at first glance, and composition is far more flexible. So while in Unity you would create classes in C-sharp and extend these classes for different types of enemies, for example, uh, you would have a base enemy class and then extend it for example a bat enemy or a skeleton enemy, which would inherit some of the behavior, but have its own uh, different set of rules. In Unity this is done uh, in the composition, in the tree composition. So you can see in his example he has a character with a base script and then he has two different behaviors slapped on in the composition as nodes. So he's not extending the character class or the character script because there is no class but instead he's adding on this behavior uh, with different nodes. Let me show you what this looks like in an example. Right here I have a basic floor set up and just these two physics uh, characters and these both have a basic script. The script is super simple, just applies the velocity to the character and if it has a direction, so a direction to move in, it will move in that direction. There's nothing about movement or jumping or anything within the script itself. Then I added on these behaviors uh, as separate nodes, so for example hop movement. And in here comes the movement part. So here we have a hop timer and we have a jump speed. And you can see the timer runs down and then at zero it jumps. On the second enemy I also have a behavior. Uh, this one just runs in a circle, so it gives an angle applies that angle to the uh, direction and applies the direction to the parent. When we run this project, you can see one of them runs in a circle and one of them hops up and down. Now what's the advantage of this? Uh, it's in composition. So in Unity, if you were to create a character that would both run in a circle and hop and down, you would create a new class that extends the enemy class again and combines these two behaviors. Well, in Godot, we can just drag one of these behaviors, I save them as a separate scene. So here in my behaviors enemies movement folder and I can just easily add this hop behavior onto the enemy that is walking in a circle. So now you can see it's both of these behaviors. And when we run it now, and now you can see the second enemy has both behaviors without creating a second class and it shows up in the scene tree. So behaviors can be much clearer at glance. This is kind of a weird example but you could imagine behaviors being a character being fire resistant, or a character being able to open doors, or a character being able to chase the player. You could just create a base enemy and then grab all your uh, behaviors and then composite an enemy to your liking within the scene tree without touching any of the code. The second thing he touches on is that you don't use multiple scripts per node, but instead add nodes with scripts. That's what I explained before. You don't add on extra scripts to this enemy, but instead add on nodes with extra scripts. So it stays clear in the composite and you can see what your enemies do or what your objects do in the scene tree. The second thing he says here is that prefabs or scene compositions do not exist. This is kind of confusing because you don't need to put this kind of mindset out of your head entirely. Uh, I could just save this enemy here, right click it, save branch as scene, uh, go into my scenes folder, create an oh. Create an enemies folder and save this scene here. And now, if I go into my uh, scenes enemies, I could just drag them in, just like you would with prefabs. So the functionality is kind of similar, but all of these are not the same prefab. They're instead just instances of that scene, and you can make them editable within the scene again by just right-clicking them and make local. And now they're their own thing, completely separate from the uh, scene file. So while they work very similar, and you can still use this mindset that you have of using prefabs and just drag and dropping them into your scene. On a base level, they work a little bit differently, that they can be local and can be unique when edited within a scene. So let's delete those. Uh, the next thing he says is that there are no global settings for a scene. This is something to wrap your head around, but I'll explain what it means. Uh, a scene in Godot is this. It's everything that you see, there is nothing above this world node, it's just the window. So just literally the uh, windows window. 
and there are no hidden settings or global variables above this node. Everything that's in the scene is within this hierarchy. So your world settings will go into a node that is a child of the scene. This is what I touched on in the last tutorial. Definitely check it out if you're moving from Unity to Godot. But in here you'll have all your settings. Same goes for reflection maps or navigation maps. They're all children of this node. So it's really just a what you see is what you get type deal. There's nothing above here. There's no tab for scene settings or anything like that. Everything that's in here is what's in the scene, nothing else. Uh, the next thing he notes is how to think about these things. He says, well, in Unity, you design your game in code and use the editor as a tool. Godot is the other way around where you design your game in the editor and then add your code. This is talking about the composition we talked about before. So you could just design your game in here, add the movements and the behaviors as nodes within the scene. It's a much more visible way of compositing games. Uh, there's less in code and more in uh, components and behaviors. Next thing he touches on is GDScript, and I've got a lot of questions about this in my last tutorial. Uh, people were asking why I wasn't using C-sharp for Godot or C++. And the main reason for this is, yes, you can use C-sharp or you can use C++, but right now documentation is all about GDScript, and when you're looking for problems, you're going to find a lot more answers in GDScript. It's really nicely integrated within the engine, and I would highly recommend to learn it. It didn't take me long at all. I came from JavaScript and C-sharp moving to GDScript. I've never wrote, written Python before or anything like that. I actually used to really hate Python before I came to Godot. And once I learned it and once I got it in my head on how it worked, I've been loving it ever since. And it's really not that hard. When you know how to code, you'll know how to write GDScript in no time. So I highly, highly recommend to just stick with GDScript and learn a new language because the support is just 10 times better when using GDScript. So really try and uh, use it, in my opinion. Of course, you can do whatever you want. But if you want great support online, GDScript is the way to go in my book. The last thing he says here is uh, to take your time moving to Godot and understand the philosophy well before moving your project over. I heavily agree with this. Uh, really understand how Godot is meant to be used and don't just brute force your Unity projects into Godot using the same principles because Godot just works a little bit different and once you get your head around it, it's a lot nicer to use it in the way that's intended instead of just brute forcing your uh, Unity skills onto Godot. So yeah, play around with it a bit, make some learning projects, fail a bunch, learn a lot and welcome to Godot.